Mr. Muhammad Siddiqui Khan, he left a will telling us exactly why he took these operations out. He says, until we feel security, you will be our targets. I mean, you the journalist, you will be the targets. Yeah, and you the journalist, you will be the targets. Are you prepared to die? No, you're not. Because you're cowards. Because you like life. And I'm quite firm on this issue. Because I remember there was one Japanese or South Korean. He came to Iraq. And when he was captured by the terrorists, because we don't support terrorism, captured by the terrorists, what did he say? Did he have a stiff upper lip? Was he brave? He said, I don't want to die! <laughs> Do you remember that? It was a very heart-wrenching time. Until you saw the bombings, gassing, imprisonment and torture of my people. My people. What does that mean? He's talking about a global mentality. Someone who believes I'm a Muslim. First, last. I know as Friday approaches, there will be many epitaphs and speeches and sermons and maybe the Archbishop of somewhere and others going to come out and say, you know, we call for peace around the world, blah, 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 blah. But I think if we took the time to read Muhammad Siddiq Khan's will, we'll see the answer for our problems. Because these people have made a clear statement. If you stop, you'll be saved. If you don't stop, we're going to kill you. Indiscriminately. We're talking about people who like to die the way you like to live. You know what that means? For the journalists especially. Friday night, They've been working the whole week, now they're going to spend all their money on the booze. Friday night was a cough night out. What cough night they go on Friday? They go to the pubs, they go to the clubs, they drink, they vomit, they lose all their sanity. That's their life. And you love that. They're like the animals. Belhum Awal. Allah said, no, they're worse. Because animal never does that. Only kuffar do that. And of course, we must be clear, we do not support terrorism. I don't support terrorism. I condemn the terrorism of the British government. I condemn the terrorism of the USA every single day. The biggest terrorist in the world is George W. Bush <laughs> and his psychic Haman, Tony Blair. And I said, Lahna Kumala Bush for Blair. Allah cursed them. Amen. That's right. Bin Laden, he offered before 7 7, by a few months. He made a statement when he offered to the European public. He never addressed the governments because when the offer of Surah, or Hudna, excuse me, when the offer of Hudna, of the truce, he offered to you, madam, non-Muslim, and you, sir, non-Muslim, offered to you, because the rest of us are Muslims, so we never support the government anyway. He offered to you, offer of truce. And did you respond, madam? Did you respond, sir? No. Therefore, you're to blame as well. People talk about 9-11. They said, 9-11, 3,000 killed. I was watching it just the other day on the news. SubhanAllah. That was a day that changed many people's lives. Especially those inside the tower. <laughs> there was one woman, a black woman, if you remember her, in 9-11. She came out of the smoke. And she <laughs> I'm going to cry, it's so, it's so touching, honestly. She came out and she said, she's covered inside, she's covered inside dust, smoke. And she goes, I was here the last time as well. <laughs> I stop a lot. It's so, it's so touching, honestly. Look to Spain. Example of what happened in Spain. The Spanish, they too were part and parcel of the war against him. And the then Prime Minister, he sided with his ally inside the White House, George W. Bush, to wage war against the Muslims. And what did the Mujahideen do? And I say Mujahideen, obviously, the word is terrorist. Terrorist, right, Mujahideen. Anyway, anyway, terrorists, what did they do? They decided him to do an attack, an attack. In the heart of Madrid, the capital of Spain, with all the security, with all the CCTV cameras, with all the awareness about terrorism didn't help in the end. You cannot stop someone who's determined to die, but more importantly, to take you with him. This uh, Israeli soldier, 
he had dual citizenship, he was a French national. In the Israeli army, there are numerous people from around the world. Therefore, France is not also at risk from the terrorists. Not according to me, but if we apply their formula, I can see maybe France could be Paris, could be the Eiffel Tower, who knows? It's a reality, something to be considered. I know I like to joke a lot, but if you think about it, why not? The Jewish community outside of Palestine, they have a role also to play in the condemnation of the apartheid, pirate state, cancerous state of Israel. The Jewish community in the UK need to condemn the terrorism of the Israeli state, vocally, publicly, in the streets, demonstrations, boycott Israeli goods from the Jews themselves. That should be their role. Otherwise, who knows what could happen? 7-7. Seven, seven. <laughs> because I believe, and it's my, only my own view, from surveying what's happening around the Muslim world, and what's taken place in the UK over the last year, I believe attacks in the UK are very likely. And I refer once again to the chief of police who said, inevitable, can't be stopped. But I say with a slight footnote, they can be stopped if we're willing to stand side by side and stop the oppression against the Muslims and stop the occupation of the Muslim lands, stop supporting those tight regimes, and then maybe then, just then, as Bin Laden said in one of his statements, the offer of truce was there for all of us. If we had risen in the UK and shown that we're against the government, maybe there would have been no 7-7. Seven -seven. <coughs> but the destiny is in your own hands. If you make the effort, I'm sure that those terrorists see that and maybe not bomb you again. But if you don't, then have no one to blame but yourself.